So you finish setting up your aquarium and it's time to add fish. But how do you know what type, how many, and whether or not they'll get along? Keep watching to find out how I selected fish for my 20 gallon Shy Guys jungle tank. Hi, I'm a gamer's wife here with practical and proven tips to help fish enthusiasts like you. And when I restarted my 20 gallon tank from scratch at the beginning of the year, there were endless possibilities of what I could keep. And I don't know about you, but I'm a planner. So I'm gonna share my whole fish selection process with you. But before I do that, take a quick poll in the upper right hand corner on how you decide to get fish. Are you like Marie Kondo, carefully deliberating over which fish bring you the most joy? Or Ariana Grande, I want it, I got it. <laughs> all right, if you're the latter, I'm here to help. Step number one is to make a list of all your favorite bucket list fish that you've ever wanted to keep. You can get inspiration online from other people's 20 gallon stocking lists or browse around your local fish store and talk to the employees, but don't buy anything yet. Why? Because you gotta do your research. For me, my criteria was peaceful community fish that can cohabitate in 20 gallons. You can download my spreadsheet from the description, but basically it lists the size of the fish, ideal temperature, pH, diet requirements, schooling numbers, and so forth. Once you have your massive list, it's time to group them in different combinations, kind of like picking your favorite Pokemon team. Each group can have a certain theme or favorite species as the starting point. So for me, I made a group of cold water fish, hot water fish, fast fish that are aggressive eaters, and then finally shy fish. The reason why I settled on the Shy Guys theme is because I've always wanted to keep coolie loaches because they look like these really neat slithery striped noodles. But everyone online said they're nocturnal and hide all the time. Boo. But wait, what if I only kept them with other timid fish that also hide all the time? Would they feel safe enough to come out? Let's find out. Ideally, I want to get most of the fish from the same store. Otherwise, I'll have to do multiple quarantines and quarantines in the gamer's wife household last four to six weeks. Ugh. So I pinged all my local stores on Facebook Messenger to check for availability. And I was lucky enough that one store had both Coolie Loaches and Celestial Pearl Danios or CPDs. The Danios had been in the store for almost a month and were really nice and fat, which was awesome. Then we get to the age old question, how many fish can I get for my 20 gallon aquarium? Well, even to this day, I still use awkadvisor.com, which is an aquarium stocking calculator where you can enter in what fish you want and then it tells you what percentage full your tank is. Really cool. Just remember that it's not perfect and it's just a general guideline, but for me, it's still a great starting point. Another way to avoid overstocking is to buy your fish in waves, starting from your favorite species to the least favorite. So for example, I could have first bought a school of coolie loaches, waited a few weeks to measure their bio load or how much nitrate content they produce in a week, and then added a school of CPDs and measured the total bio load then, and so on and so forth, until I reached my ideal amount of nitrates produced per week. For me, I like to have a balanced mixture of filtration, live aquarium plants, and fish so that only 20 ppm of nitrates are produced per week because I personally don't want to do water changes more than once a week. Then if I accidentally forget to do water changes, you know, for a week or two, it's okay if the nitrates rise up to 40 ppm because I have a little buffer room to work with. All right, back to the story. So even though these fish were the first ones for the 20 gallon tank, I still wanted to quarantine them in a separate hospital tank. My display tank has plants and substrate and it would just be a huge pain if I had to disinfect everything if the fish ended up carrying some lethal disease. Because of my terrible experiences with illnesses in the past, I like to use preventative medications to treat my new fish. So check out the tutorial linked in the description on how to dose with API General Cure, Erythromycin, and Ikex. In my case, it wasn't disease that killed my coolie loaches and celestial pearl danios, but my own fault for not adding dechlorinator into the quarantine tank. Don't! If you want to know what happened, I covered the whole story in more detail in my chlorine video linked below. Now, like I mentioned in my video on researching plants, I'm not a robot. Yes, I like to plan using spreadsheets, but I'm not above making the occasional impulse purchase. So surprise fish number one was the peacock gudgeon. I got it at the same time as the coolie loaches and CPDs because I thought they were super shy. 
Like, here's a picture of the one time I'd previously seen a Peacock Gudgeon in store, and it was hiding the whole time. Turns out they're not shy at all. <laughs> in fact, Voltron, which is what we named him, is the most personable fish in the entire Shy Guys tank. The other creatures hardly care if I exist, but Voltron always comes up to the glass if he sees me and is very curious and investigates anything new in the tank. So I'm very pleasantly surprised at his interactiveness. Impulse purchase number two were the Thai micro crabs. This acquisition did not go as well. I loved them while they lasted and would see them occasionally crawling among the Anubius Nana Petite. So cute. But I'm pretty sure Voltron ate them. Yeah, you wouldn't think they could fit in that tiny mouth of his, but he probably picked at them and bit off little chunks at a time. <sighs> I really miss them. So besides the mistake with the micro crabs, I've been very happy with my fish stocking choices. While in quarantine, the fish were all super shy and always darted away every time I approached the tank. However, as soon as I introduced them to the planted jungle, they showed completely different behaviors. For one, the coolie loaches are always out and about, even though they're supposedly nocturnal. I frequently find them laying out in the open or scavenging around in the ground. I even have crazy footage of them hanging off of the frog bit, which I'll explain in a future care video. The Celestial Pearl Danios are also much braver than I thought. I would say my green neon tetras were far flightier because the CPDs will readily come near the front glass even when I'm there. However, I was surprised to find out that fin nipping within their species is apparently a thing, so I'll have to deal with that eventually. Now, some of you eagle-eyed viewers might be thinking, wait, what about the autosynchless catfish? I've definitely spotted a few. Well, I didn't get them until much later, so that's actually a story for another time. If you want to see more videos on the Shy Guys Jungle Tank, take a look at my playlist over here and then tune in next week for my review on the Phoenix Stingray 2. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!